11 and a half months from now, when you're celebrating the start of 2023, how will your cooking be different? Or is it going to be the same? How do you get from where you are to where you want to be by the end of this year? Well, it all starts with setting some goals, and we're going to talk about setting your cooking goals for the new year today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the free, public, weekly show for the methods, techniques, insights into better food and cooking. The only one with a big, noisy barge that drives pilings uh, in the background as well. Uh, But look, we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern right here on my Chef Todd Moore page on Facebook. A reminder, this class is open to the public. Nobody pays to see Tuesday's Carefree Cooks Code. So share it with as many people as you'd like. And if you're not a student of one of my many paid courses, I mean, if you are a student of one of my many paid courses, this is not part of the curriculum. You didn't pay for this. Your courses are found on that specific website, webcookingclasses.com, for my flagship cooking methods mastery course, Web Cooking Classes, SauceBossPro.com for the culinary school level Sauce Boss program, GetDinnerDone.com for the course that matches dinner inspirations with the right cooking method, ObedientOutdoorCooking.com if you're a flame tamer and part of my grilling course, SpanishFoodFinds.com, FrenchFoodFinds.com, HawaiianFoodFinds.com, ScottishFoodFinds.com, on and on and on. Carefree Cooks Code is open to everybody. And if you'd like to get a private email reminder of when I'm going live, sign up at webcookingclasses.com slash live. And if you want to see what I'm cooking and how I did it, you can follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well. This is my most recent post. This is important. A 12-second video that's a lesson in itself. This is a proper simmer right here. Small bubbles around the edge of the pan. Slight convection to the liquid. Most home cooks boil everything. Big difference between boil, simmer, and poach. See the lesson on Instagram. How do I do it? Well, I'm a carefree cook, you see? I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook because I wind up creating my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. I love to cook. I really enjoy it. Even though it's been a scary start to 2022 so far, more bad news everywhere. But ultimately, you can find safety, security, confidence, and pride in your own kitchen. Stay in your kitchen, is what I would say. The kitchen is a safe place. You can express your creativity. You can progress further in your own carefree cooking journey. But if you ever want to progress further in anything, you have to set some goals. You you have to see the end result before you even start. So... Where do you want your cooking to be 12 months from now? I'm not talking about resolutions. We did that last week. Those are wishes, right? Those are things that I hope happen. So we're going to make it happen this week. So what do you want to be able to do that you can't do now? Ask yourself that question because eventually you can do it. There's nothing that's impossible. I mean, it, it, sure, TV chefs, they want to make you think it's really, really, really hard. This in particular chef wants you to think it's really, really easy once you know how, okay? So (laughs) when I think about my cooking progressing, and it's so hard (laughs) to believe now because just two years ago last month, I had just gotten back from Mexico and my head was a buzz with all the new Latin dishes that I had learned. I brought home chilaquiles and spent about a year perfecting this dish for me. 
right? I had just learned it, tasted it, watched it. I came home, all the elements of it, the sauce, the, the tortilla chips, the eggs, the, you know, it just took a while for me to get. And maybe now you're making chilaquiles because of what you saw me go through to figure it out, right? But when you see me do it, then you put your own twist on it. And that's the thing. That, that It's another carefree cook that probably saw you put the twist on what you saw me do it. And that carefree cook started making their own version and on and on and on. That's why our community works. Learn something, demonstrate it, then pass it on to somebody else in our community. That's how we do around here. Every single student becomes a teacher. That's when I know I'm successful. And that's why setting goals are so important. So you know where you're going. We're going to talk about that. But first, I've got a what am I for you today. What the heck are those little green football shaped green things? Tell me in the comment section below. Uh, when I say football shaped, I mean American football, not European football. So these oblong. Anyway, tell me in the comment section below. What am I? And I'll tell you at the end of the show today. Uh, hey, everyone, it's a brand new year, and uh, we, we, we got to get going. You, you got to start early. There are about 355 breakfasts, 355 lunches, uh, well, actually, 354 breakfasts, 350, I've already had breakfast, 355 lunches, 355 dinners ahead of us until we reach New Year's again. So what's your cooking going to be like this time next year? I don't know if you could do the quick math, but that's 1,038 meals that you got to get through until you get to that point. And I know that seems intimidating. Gee, Chef Todd, <laughs> why'd you have to put it like that? 1,038 meals. But that just means you got a lot of time to work on it, right? So will what you eat be exactly the same a year from now? Or will the way you cook be the same? Or will those things be different? Or... Can you set some cooking goals so each of those thousand plus meals moves you forward on your journey toward breaking that carefree cook's code and becoming a carefree cook? True freedom, true confidence, true pride in what you're cooking. I want you to be able to do that before the ball drops again. So imagine using 2022 to improve your cooking one step at a time, even if it takes over a thousand steps to do it. So let's talk about setting your goals for the year. And in my many, many years of teaching, I find that there are three major reasons that people want to move their cooking forward. Three things that I hear over and over and over again, really just three general goals. And first there's the goal of need to, right? You've made a resolution for your health. Cooking for your health is a need to goal, right? Your health and wellness. Maybe you need to lose weight. Maybe you need to have more energy. Maybe you need to do whatever the doctor told you to do. The second cooking goal is cooking for others. This is the cooking goal of have to. You have to provide for your family. You have to be sure you're making the right food choices for them. You have to stick to a food budget and not waste money. That's have to goal. Third is cooking for satisfaction. You're cooking for yourself. You're cooking for enjoyment. You're cooking for a hobby. And this is the goal of want to. You want to understand how cooking works. You want to recreate a, a, a long forgotten recipe. You want to finally figure out how to make the best steak or the best sauce or the best chicken or the best rice. This is the goal of your desires. So that's not to say that, that each of these goals are mutually exclusive. You can have one of them. You can have two of them. You can have all three of them if you want for the coming year because many of them can be solved with the same thing. But breaking the Carefree Cooks Code should start right now if you need to, have to, or want to improve your cooking over the next 1,038 meals. Now, luckily, it's pretty easy to do if you focus on the methods that are taught in culinary school. But it's a really difficult journey if you're following recipes, if you're watching TV shows, if you're looking for a written instruction that is going to guarantee that it comes out, it's not going to happen. And with those things, you don't learn when you cook. Nobody learns from a recipe. 
because the next day they got to go find another recipe. But look, when you practice a reliable method of cooking, you take mental notes. You recognize what you did well and what you could do better. And then you improve on your cooking each time. You actually learn when you have a dependable, repeatable, reliable method of cooking because you're always working on making the method better. That's the path. That's the path to becoming truly free in your cooking and reaching your cooking goals. Repeatable method that you constantly improve and then bring in your own creativity. Okay, so, yeah, great idea, Chef Todd. But how do you do this? It, it, this seems a really big ask, right? There's that old saying, how do you eat an elephant? Well, the answer is one bite at a time. Not the best saying for a culinary school. <laughs> a little too on the nose, right? But how do you reach your cooking goals? One method at a time. And I've got some suggestions for you. And as I show you these suggestions, think about whether they're right for you, whether they fit into your need to, have to, or want to categories of setting your goals for the new year. All right, so the first key to breaking the Carefree Cooks Code is really the top of the funnel when it comes to teaching cooking, and that's heat transfer. That's how heat affects food. If you're not comfortable with the understanding, the underlying, anticipating what's going to happen to your food as it cooks, you're not understanding heat transfer. You're not understanding how heat affects food. And this is the very first thing. It's lesson number one in web cooking classes, and it's the reason that our community is so much different. I mean, this is, this is a groundswell shift. We focus on the heat, not on the written instructions. Not on a clock, not on the oven temperature. Because the key to successful cooking, ultimately, is controlling the heat. And when you can anticipate the effects of food, the effects of heat on food, then you don't need a recipe book. You don't need a clock. You can ignore what the oven temperature is because you understand these four effects of heat on food. And that's why it's the very first thing I teach in web cooking classes. Next is repeating a basic cooking method that will give you the results you're looking for. Carefree cooks always begin with the end result in mind. They think to themselves, which method of cooking will get me the final result I'm looking for? Not which recipe do I need to go find? And if you want to whip up quick meals right on the stovetop, usually using only one pan, then it's the nine steps in the basic saute method. This is the second thing. I ever teach anybody I meet that wants to learn about cooking. Because when you can repeat the nine steps in basic saute over and over again, you get good at that method, then you change the ingredients each time and boom, endless variety of food. You won't even bother writing stuff down. You think you're, you're making up your own original recipes? It happened to me. I wrote them down and then I didn't because I made something new the next night, right? That's why it's the second thing I teach in web cooking classes because this is the most immediately empowering. Most of my students say that their investment, the tuition in web cooking classes, was well worth it after this class. Only the second class. And they got 46 more <laughs> that they can pick from. Only the second, they're like, oh, it's already worth it. So if you want an item uh, with charred grill marks, say you like that nice appeal, you like the little bit more smoky flavor, you like to cook outside, well, you start to practice the steps in the grilling method. And, and by the way, just because you're a man, you're not born with grilling skills, okay? It, it takes practice. <laughs> it takes skill. Just because you burn it outside doesn't mean it's nicely blackened. If it were burned inside, it'd be just plain old burn. So it, you, you, there is a method to it. There are step-by-step -step methods to grilling as well. And if you find yourself cooking your food in boiling water, like I just showed you, well, there's definitely room for improvement there. By knowing that difference between boil, simmer, and poach, you'll start controlling moist heat just like you do dry heat on the stovetop. A lot of home cooks don't understand controlling moist heat, and it really can make a big difference. Uh, do you want your fish or your vegetables as part of a maybe low calorie or low fat diet, you, you want them to be as good as they can possibly be in the coming year? Well, practice the steaming method. 
Steaming has a method to it as well. And perhaps this is going to be the most flavorful, the most moist and tender veggies or fish or steamed delicate items that you've ever made. If your goal this year is to make stews and chilies, you want to make beef bourguignon, you want to make coco van, you want to make some of these fancy French dishes, just really nail it down, you know? Well, you're going to want to examine the methods in braising and stewing. This is where you take cheap cuts of meat, you turn it into something delicious and tender. Well worth the investment of trying to figure out the right way for braising because $5 a pound stuff turns into $90 a pound in your mouth. Value is what it tastes like. Is your goal making great sauces? Is your goal <clears throat> to make a better omelet and work with eggs? I mean, understanding how eggs work <laughs> is invaluable in every part of the kitchen. Maybe you want to make your own pasta this year. Uh, do you want to start making fluffy rice instead of sticky rice? Do you know the difference between herbs and spices? Has it been confusing you when to use them in your cooking, which to use in your cooking? Uh, maybe set a goal of mastering an advanced sauce like hollandaise or beurre blanc. Maybe this is the year you start baking your own bread. Maybe since it's cold, you want to make nice creamy thick soups. How about bone broths, flavorful stocks for your health, for your wellness this year, for your steamed items, for your sauces, for your soups, for your poached items, for your simmered items, a flavorful liquid goes a long way. And all of this, this is all within your reach this year when you set your intention, set your goal for yourself, focus on how you are cooking rather than what you are cooking. And if you got to write it on a piece of paper and stick it up on the refrigerator, make better sauces, then, then do that. Or write under it specifically how your sauce is going to be better. Because last time I overcooked the roux. Cook the roux less. Write it on the refrigerator. Um, I added too much liquid. Add less liquid. Whatever it might be. Keep a running list of what you did well, what you could do better. And I'm telling you, in less than five tries, you're going to be a master. So you won't have to worry about a thousand meals. You're only going to have to worry about five or ten of them and you're going to get it. It's all within your reach. You can do it. And a thousand thirty-eight meals later, you're going to be amazed at how your cooking is improved without buying another cookbook, without watching some celebrity chef on TV, without watching the food TV for hours and hours, along with the 20 commercials or so that you'll see every hour. You're not going to have to mess with any of that. It's confusing. It's frustrating. Beside focusing on the methods of cooking, there's a really simple way to see how your cooking progresses over the year. This is a really important thing. Take photos. This is what carefree cooks do. I see it all the time. Those people that have either broken the carefree cooks code for them in, in one way or another, or are working toward it, they can look back on a dinner photo from a month ago or a year ago and immediately see how they've gotten better. This is the best thing you can do. You're looking to make that incredible lobster sauce, something like that. Take a picture of the first time. What'd you do well? What could you do better? Take a picture the next time. And then a year from now, you're going to look back on that picture and go, oh my goodness, I've come so far. And like I said before, don't bother writing stuff down. That's such a waste of time. Why take a method inspiration, convert it into a recipe by writing it down, and then at a future date, go back and cook from the recipe. That's going backward in your cooking goal. Use the method. Come up with an inspiration. What'd you do well? What could I do better? And then the next time, come up with another inspiration. Who cares that you can't make it again? You're making something even better each time. So when you're constantly creating your own recipes, you'll probably never make any of them twice. So forget writing it down but focus on taking photos so that you can see your progress. You can do it. You, you can do it. You can set a goal and you can work toward achieving it. That is how you get to where you want to be. You know, I see it every day. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Um, I see it. I hear it every day. I'm in our Carefree Cooks community every day. I'm behind the scenes and monitoring your progress, no matter what your goal is. And I do see people getting better. I see people trying to make better loaves of bread. Others are working with sauces, or they're, they're working on perfecting their roux, their thickening agent. Uh, people are discovering new foods. I never cooked with this before, 
now I have the confidence, so I do. Uh, they're getting inspirations from other, other members. One of my f favorite things in the Carefree Cooks community is when one member tags another. Thank you, Janice Smith, for the, 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 I made it this way, so on and so forth. And then, like I mentioned, then somebody will tag that person. Hey, you took Janice's idea. You did this to it. Now I did that to it. It just makes our community so rich. It, it's an amazing, amazing community we have here. Almost 20,000 people strong. And if you're not part of your movement, <laughs> if you're not part of our movement, you should consider making that one of your goals for the coming year. Because to me, the quickest way to get to your cooking goal is to surround yourself with the people that have gone there before. The people that have taken that journey. They know the pitfalls. They know where the Wicked Witch of the West is. <laughs> which is like a fallen souffle <laughs> or something. They could tell you how to avoid that. This year just started, but it could only get better, right? Nobody starts the year and says, yeah, it's going to get worse. No, it can only get better. And I used to put this idea into my culinary student's head. And I want you to think about this also, all right? Just give me your attention for another minute or so. I want you to think about the idea that a year is going to go by. I mean, nobody can deny that. It'll be 2023 before we know it. Nobody can stop that. I mean, heck, 10 years is going to go by without any effort from you, from me, from anybody. It's going to happen anyway. In that time, I used to ask my culinary students, in that time, you can do everything or you can do nothing. Really, it's simple. It's your choice. Time is going by. You can't stop it. You can't slow it. So are you going to do everything or nothing? Will you do everything possible to move toward your goals or will you do nothing? Here's the problem though. A year is going to go by. 10 years are going to go by. And at the end of it, what will you have? Everything or nothing? Because the result is going to come. And a small effort, small effort, Every day, 1,038 times, a small effort every day eventually has you sitting right where you envision your life. Or will you cooking just be the same 1,038 meals later? And I remind my students, you can do everything or you can do nothing, but the time is still going to pass. So my question to you is, how are you going to spend the next 1,038 meals? Improving or staying the same? Let's get back to the what am I <laughs> today. These little green buds are the ones that are found in chicken piccata, in a puttanesca sauce, pretty much any Mediterranean baked fish dish that you come across. They're capers. Capers. Capers come from a bush called Caparis spinosa. I know a guy named Spinosa. Um, it grows wild across the Mediterranean and Asia. The capers that you see in a grocery store, these are the unripened flower buds of the plant. So they pick these flower buds off before they flower. They're immature buds. They're dried and they preserve them. So they either go into a, a salt, a dry brine, or they're pickled in a brine, which is what gives the capers that, that savory bitter almost, uh, briny kind of flavor. And if you haven't used capers in your cooking, maybe this should be your goal for the New Year's. <laughs> I'm going to use more capers is my goal. Capers have a really nice like lemony tang to them, that salty brininess. I really like them. I, I love capers. You know, strangely though, I hate olives. And it's pretty much the same thing. Go figure. Uh, one more thing. In the store, you might see on a label, non-pareil Caper, capers, P-A-R-E-I-L, non-pareil capers. This is an age, right? So these are the youngest flower buds. They have to be graded under seven millimeters to be a non-pareil. They're the most tender. They're the softest. So uh, a non-pareil is a French word. It basically means has no equal, the, the best. These are, these are the highest quality capers. Uh, the difference between a caper and a caper berry is simply the age. Capers are the young flower buds. If they're allowed to mature and not picked and dried, then they form much larger caper berries and they have a pod and seeds inside. It's a whole nother story. Non-pareil, capers, small, tender. I love capers in my remoulade sauce. Uh, anything I do Cajun, uh, I usually add 
capers to it. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you know someone that really should be setting some cooking goals for the new year? Well, please like, love, share this video with them so we can all benefit from an improved lifestyle through better food and cooking in 2022. Hey, did you see it? Okay, here, here, here's what happened to me uh, this last week. It snowed here in Virginia, the northern neck of Virginia. My first winter here, and I got to put up with seven inches of snow. I left my snow shovel back in Baltimore. And to make it worse, I was between grocery store visits. Very little food in the house, but no problem for me. I just whipped stuff up out of the pantry, grab a can of green, uh, black beans, I think that is. Uh, whipping stuff up, making great meals. Heather turns to me, she's like, oh, I'm so glad I married a chef. Uh, the truth of the matter is she didn't marry one, she made one. <laughs> I wasn't a chef, not, nonetheless. Um, I was thinking about shivering in the snow. I was thinking about all those people out there who don't have the ability to just whip stuff up from their pantry. The people... I'm thinking about the people that went into brain lock, right? Because they couldn't get out to the grocery store or they just couldn't come up with an idea for dinner. And this frustrated me. So maybe it was my cabin fever <laughs> uh, that brought about this idea. It's something that I rarely do, but I decided I was going to do something crazy this year. I'm going to start giving away web cooking classes, trial memberships for free. You know, again, maybe frostbite, maybe cabin <laughs> fever, but, you know, before I change my mind. I want everyone to think the way that I do it is really what it comes down to. I want everyone to think the way that I do in the kitchen. And the only way for me to accomplish that quickly and easily is to just give them a free trial membership in my flagship cooking methods course and try it out. So go to webcookingclasses.com slash trial. Grab your free trial membership before I close the doors on this. What the heck was I thinking offer? That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> what the heck was I thinking offer? All, uh, a web cooking classes membership, by the way, is $349. Uh, and you're going to get, there's nothing restricted, there's nothing held back. You're going to get the free trial, the same thing. So $349 value. You get all 48 cooking method uh, lessons. You get all the bonus videos. You get all the printable lesson handouts and guides. And you get membership in our Carefree Cooks community. Even with the trial, because I know when you get in there, you're going to see how amazing it is. And you're not going to be able to leave. I know you're just not going to be able to leave. And by the way, the last time I did this, if you're wondering, was 2016. Six years ago was the last time I just gave away membership. So I, 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 I'd hurry up if I were you. I'd get started before I pull the plug. And once the plug is pulled, the plug is pulled. That free trial is about to get even more valuable as well. How could that possibly be more valuable? you got to be kidding me. Let me tell you how. Don't tell anybody. Next Monday, I'm holding a Carefree Cooks only live cooking event. Martin Luther King Day next Monday. Figure a lot of people off. Got time for it. So private event for Carefree Cooks only. This is going to be a deep dive into one of my favorite culinary topics. So that's why you need to be a carefree cook already to get into this class because this will not be an entry level class. This is going to be a second or third semester topic and I just know you're going to love it. So, if you're not a web if you're a web cooking class member, member of any of my courses that I mentioned, get into that carefree cooks community. You have a free membership waiting for you and you're going to get that free class next Monday. If you're not a web cooking classes student member and you want to see this private deep dive next Monday, January 17th, here's your opportunity to get it for free. Start your trial. Get comfortable with how web cooking classes works. Take in the private deep dive class next Monday and then cancel. If you think it's still not for you, I find it hard to believe. After all that, if you think it's not for you, that's fine. You cancel, you owe nothing. Webcookingclasses.com slash trial. So, until next week, <laughs> next Tuesday when we meet again at noon Eastern, taking even more steps toward cracking the Carefree Cooks Code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your goal-oriented cooking success. Bye, everyone.